Tesla just released a new generation three wall connector. So here's what you need to know about it. So what's different? First off, it only goes up to 48 amps instead of the old 80 amps. Now older S and X with the dual chargers could go up to 80 amps, but all cars sold today are limited to 48 or 32. So it's really not a big deal for the majority of current and future owners, but I'm sure some current owners will be disappointed. The cable length is now 18 feet instead of 24 feet. And by making the cable shorter and also having that lower current limit at 48 amps, that lets them make the cable lighter, which that's totally a plus in my book as long as you can live with that shorter cable. Load sharing now goes up to 16 wall connectors instead of the previous four. I ran into this exact problem when I installed 10 chargers at my old job. All of the chargers had to be limited to 16 amps each just in case they were all used at the same time. So if we would have had this option back then, you wouldn't have to limit the charging speed if you have fewer cars, and that's pretty awesome. It now has Wi-Fi, and that might seem kind of silly if the car already has Wi-Fi, why does the charger need Wi-Fi? But they say right now it will be used to do the initial configuration, so instead of little dials that you have to turn or jumpers or dip switches you just connect to it with your phone and you configure it you'll also be able to use it to monitor charging and that's how the chargers work together to do load sharing they'll also use it to do firmware updates and remote service and they promise even more features in the future they say it can be used to communicate with other Tesla products. So I guess we'll see what that's going to be. It now has a tempered glass front that's white instead of the old plastic in silver or matte black. And that glass will certainly be less prone to scratches, so that's nice. So should you run out and get one or should you upgrade if you already have a Gen 2 or Gen 1? Possibly, but probably not until we get some more features. I mean, it is nice that they've added features to it and kept this price the same at $500. It's a really good value for what it can do compared to the other options out there. But personally, for me to upgrade, I would be most interested if that other Tesla products that they talked about ends up being solar. So right now I have Tesla solar and I have a power wall. And once that power wall fully charges, I start exporting my excess solar back out onto the grid. And that's great right now because peak time is currently when the sun is still out. So I can sell that power at high prices, but that's not always gonna be the case. And utilities are changing that even now. So what's going to happen is they keep pushing those peak hours later and later in the day. And the time that solar is out is going to be lower priced. So rather than sell your electricity at a low price, I'd rather charge the power wall and then have the car automatically start charging. And if the two could communicate, the car could match its charge speed to exactly what's coming in from solar. So that would be really good for me with a power wall and it would be really good for people who don't have power walls. So that feature, definitely. Another feature I'd like to see is time of use charging scheduling at the connector instead of the car. And what we have in the car right now is decent. It uses GPS so that it knows when you're at home and when you're not at home, and that works out okay. But it's just always made more sense to me to have that tied to the connector. That way it doesn't matter whose car plugs in at what time. The connector is connected to the house and that's where the time of use power is coming from. So it just has always made sense to me for the connector to own that. So maybe we'll get that. Another cool thing would be some utilities have programs where if they can control when your car charges, you can save some money on your electricity. And in some cases you can even use it to make money. And I'm currently signed up for, it's called Ohm Connect. And it's kind of like a game you connect it to your utility bill 
and they monitor how much electricity you've used in the past and you'll get a notification that says, hey, we have a really expensive time coming up. We will pay you to save money. So, so far I've made about $60 doing it, which isn't a ton, but we've already had really efficient use of electricity. So we really don't have that much to gain. So in some cases I've seen where people make thousands doing this. And I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. And that referral link will get you a $10 when you sign up. So it's pretty fun. You know, if nothing else, it doesn't cost anything. And it just makes it like a game to save energy. So nothing wrong with that. So overall, the wall connector has always been kind of a hard sell for most people. When the mobile connector that the cars come with can already do 32 amps, the wall connector really just lets you charge a little bit faster. And for $500 plus installation, there's really not that much value there. But with this Gen 3 and its potential new features, that really could change. If it can tie into solar to help you save money and tie into services like Ohm Connect to help you make money, it could potentially pay for itself. And that would make a lot of sense for a lot of people. So I'm all for it. That's about it. I hope this helps. Leave us your comments if you have any more ideas for what they should implement. Everybody needs to tweet Elon and he's always open to suggestion for good features. So yeah, thanks for watching.